Hey, what's up everyone? Lad here. The Largo Cup is finally upon us. If you thought the Yan Long Cup was difficult, well the Largo Cup is going to blow you out of the water. We're going to go over the fight, boss weaknesses, and what characters you should bring. Let's go. <laughs> the Largo battle has four phases. In each of those phases, he summons two add-ons, respectively, at certain HP thresholds. Those are the first phase being at 100%, when you start the battle, the second phase at 85%, the third phase at 65%, and finally his 4 face at 45% or lower. So it's going to be a total of 8 add-ons that will be taken along with Largo. So after you take out all the 4 phases and get him down to 45% or lower, he permanently gets 2 acts added on. So a total of 3 acts in 1 turn order. So this is where you want to take him out as soon as you can. Largo and his squad of add-ons all use a multitude of both physical and elemental attacks. So this is where you want to buy the latest armor that's balanced from both physical damage and elemental. Now going over weaknesses, Largo has 27 shields and over 1 million HP. He is weak to daggers, bows, and ice. Then moving on to his phase 1 add-ons, starting from the bottom to the top, and shout out to Advancer64 for this fight. I took images from this fight. The first add-on is the stone looking beast like monster. It has 17 shields and is weak to swords, staves, ice, lightning, and wind. The second add-on on the lantern looking like has 15 shields and is weak to swords, bows, fans, ice and lightning and again starting from bottom up the third add-on is again the stone looking like beast monster with 17 shields it's weak to swords daggers staves lightning and wind the fourth add-on of the bird like monster has 16 shields and it's weak to the pole arms fans bows lightning and fan the fifth add-on is the armor monster with 18 shields it's weak to swords daggers lightning and wind the sixth add-on, again the bird-like monster, is weak to pole arms, fan, ice, and wind. Finally, the last two. The seventh add-on is a brown armor monster of 18 shields. It's weak to swords, staves, ice, and lightning. The eighth add-on, the blue armor monster with 16 shields, is weak to swords, pole arms, bows, and wind. Okay, so now let's head back to the drawing table and brainstorm a bit about enemy weaknesses. For swords, of the total enemies, including Largo, only 6 of the add-ons are weak to swords. I would just bring one warrior as Largo is the main target, and sadly he's not weak to swords. If you have Lars, he arguably is the best warrior, as he has an AoE 3 hit sword attack and a 3 hit wind ability. You can also opt to bring in Fjord and 2B, as they both have multi hit sword attacks. For daggers, of the 9 enemies, 3 are weak to that, including Largo, but dagger warriors also have shield breaking capabilities. If you're going your physical DPS row daggers, you'll need to bring along shield breaking abilities, such as Double White Burst or Therion's Hellfire. Pretty good candidates are Bell, Therion, Viola, and A2. This will probably be my road as my ice team isn't as strong. For bows, four enemies are weak to that, including Largo. I would bring one or two hunters, depending on your composition. Scarecrow's great bow user, as he's able to use wind, which six of the add-ons are weak to. Another really good bow user is Kirstjes. He has access to other hit ice attack, unfortunately he only has one hit bow attacks. The other bow users you could bring are either Hanit or Zanta. Hanit has a 3 to 5 hit AoE ability and she also has access to a 1 hit lightning attack, which 6 of the add-ons are weak to. Zanta has a 5 hit random target bow attack ability. You can also use his ability Summon Zagan, which either does a 2 hit dagger attack or an AoE pole armor attack. For staves, of the 9 enemies, only 3 are weak to that, not including Largo. But with this fight, many of your staff havers will not be breaking shields, as they'll be too busy healing. For pole arms, again, only 3 add ons are weak to that. This could be Ulbrich, as he has access to swords and polearm usage, and the other best polearm user is Cardona. She has access to a 3 hit polearm attack, and also a 4 hit ice attack, which Largo is weak to. For France, only 3 add ons are weak to that. I don't see myself using a dancer, as it's going to be pretty tough. And then moving on to the elemental weaknesses, starting with ice. With the 9 enemies, 5 are weak to ice, including Largo. This seems to be the best weakness that most compositions are going for, as it is one of the most multi-hit attack elements that our current travelers have. We also have great debuffs for it as well. Let's start with Liana. If you have her, this is the perfect time to whip her out. She has access to an AoE 3 hit ice attack that lowers both physical and elemental attack. Sadly, she was a limited time unit like Odette, so many people probably don't have her. Next, we have everyone's favorite, Sophia. She's able to break shields for a 3 hit ice attack. It also debuffs ice resistance as well. And then finally, we have the Grammy Award winning traveler, Cyrus. He has access to a 3 hit ice and lightning, and is able to nuke. And then for lightning, 
Of the 9 enemies that you'll encounter in the Largo Cup, 6 add-ons are weak to that. I wouldn't worry too much about this coverage as again we're mainly focusing on Largo's weaknesses. And then lastly Wind. Of the 9, 6 are weak to that. Again it's the same with Lightning. Don't focus on Wind specific travelers. Ok let's put this into perspective and start thinking of notable units to bring. Depending on what characters you have, you'll have to adjust your team accordingly to both elemental and physical attackers. Starting with physical DPS characters, you could use A2 for a double wide burst and her 3 hit dagger ability. I want to see her in action so I'll be using her. Now this fight is going to take many turns, and A2 is not a character for long battles. We'll be saving her berserk mode for later on when Largo's HP is at about 45%. Next you can also bring Therion for his health bar and dagger abilities, then Viola for her anti-attack and double wide burst. Then onto warriors, like said before, I'll probably just bring Lars as his abilities are catered for this fight. If you don't have Lars, you can bring Fior or Tubi or possibly Teeklin. And then for polearm users, your best option is probably Cardona as she has a 3 hit AoE polearm attack and a 4 hit ice attack. Finally for hunters, Scarecrow is probably the best for this fight. He has access to a multi hit bow attack and also has access to a 4 hit random target win attack. Christus, if you have him, is also a strong contender as he also has access to multi hit ice attacks. Next onto magic users, you'll definitely want to bring Cyrus along if you have him. He covers both ice and lightning. Depending on who you have, you can also bring Sophia for her ice abilities. Finally, onto our supports. If you have Liana, make sure you bring her. Her abilities are made for this fight. Sadly, I don't have her, so in her place, I'm going to bring in Ophelia. And then Elfin. He is by far one of the best supports in the game. His pomegranate and region ability are too good. Largo uses fire attacks, and Elfin's region ability gives a 20% resist to fire and ice. But that's not all. Elfin also has a single target 4 hit ice attack. So he's gonna be a great unit for this fight. Well anyways, that's a quick overview of the fight. Let me know who you're gonna bring along. This cup is gonna be tough. With over 1 million HP and 8 add-ons, it's gonna be a long battle. There's gonna be a good number of people who won't be able to clear this cup just yet. And to those, don't worry. Take your time. The game isn't going anywhere, and the travelers coming out are only getting stronger and better. When the cup comes out on Wednesday, and if we're able to clear it, we'll go ahead and go over his abilities. For now, take care of yourselves. Let out.